G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now I did a video featuring the little Cherson CX-10, the world's largest uh, multi-rotor, which it isn't really. But I thought, you know, these are so damn cheap, why don't we have a look inside and see how they can manage to make something this small and cheap for the price they do. Uh, let's do a CX-10 teardown. Transmitter seems to come apart easy enough. A couple of Phillips headed screws. There we go. Just a reminder, always take the battery out if you're doing this sort of thing because if you want to use it again you might find that if you don't take out the battery you could accidentally short stuff out and then it won't work. But here we go, is that screw coming out? Oh, seems to be made to the usual Chinese precision standards. It's loose but it's not coming out. Well, there's a lot of rattling going on in there. I suspect all these switches here will fall, all these switches here will fall out if I just am not very careful. So I'm going to take my time, there we go. Oh look at that. Oops, and there goes the screw. So there's just a single circuit board in here. Let's take a closer look at that little baby. There's not an awful lot to see on the side. I notice there's a bit of flux residue from soldering, but a hand soldering has gone on here. Um, I'll have a look, we'll have to turn it over to see anything, but I think turning it over is gonna make all the guts fall out, so I have to be careful I'll do that while you're not looking, because otherwise I'll just embarrass myself. So there we are, that's what's on the other side. You've got your big stick units here, of course, but down in the bowels there, I'll just give me a screwdriver as a pointer. We've got the power switch, we've got the little buttons for the trims, and they're all little tacked buttons as you'd expect. There's a little integrated circuit down here probably does all the uh, digital encoding work. A little power supply filtering here, and this little board in here, maybe we can tip it up and see it. This is where all the RF goodness happens, and there's a little short, you know, 25, 30 mil antenna here for the 2.4. So, yeah, component count wise, it's actually, there's not a lot on there. It's, the little stick units are quite nice. I mean, look at these, the little stick units, there's a pot here and another pot around the other side. That's actually really cool. I'm quite impressed with those little stick units. A um, little buzzer here for making the beeps. Uh, how they can make that for the price, you know, it beggars belief. There's no way you could do it in the West. Uh, it's just the Chinese, of course, low labor and uh, very efficient manufacturing systems now. They've got their act together. I mean, this will all be automated. The only signs of manual soldering, as I say, are these ones over here where you can see the flux residue um, because they've soldered stuff on. So, yeah, that's a brilliant little piece of kit, actually. Most impressed with that. Now let's take a look at the quad itself. Obviously I think we're, it seems to clip together on the edges here and I think the blue plastic cover will pull off the top so we'll have to take the props off. Better make a note of which way the props go on and actually there's not, most quads, full size, you know, big ones or little ones, generally speaking that the, the lifting blade um, rotates inwards at the front and inwards at the back. So that gives you an idea of the pitch. Basically that the, the blade, well you know that the, the the, it's counterclockwise here and clockwise there. Just to give you a clue, and counterclockwise here and clockwise there. Diagonally opposite, you have the same pitch props. So yeah, I hope you, hope you can understand what I'm saying now. Pull the props off, they come off pretty easily. It's not a big problem with that. And inside there are some little motors. They will be brushed motors, of course, because they're just practical and cheap and the most sensible way to do it now. I suspect these little plastic clips undo. Of course, I forgot that there are some little screws underneath as well. I better undo those. Okay, so there's the lid off. And what do we see when we get in there? Well, there are two little processor chips here. One's probably the RF. Probably this one here will be the, which one, which ends have got the air there? This will be the RF chip. And this will be the logic chip that decodes all the signals that come out of the RF. We've got, again, we've got a little 25 millimeter piece of wire here acting as an antenna. Uh, there's the power switch off and on. I think that's, yeah, that's, no, that's the charging button, sorry. That's the charger connection there. Got our four motors. There's a little crystal over here that's used to clock the chips there. And there's not a lot else to see on there. There are some small passives, these little tiny components that are way small. Um, so we we'll have to take the back off, see if there's anything on the back, because I see no sign of ESCs or anything like that. And maybe there'll be some other circuitry on the back. Let's flip it over and see what's there. Ah, yes, here's the back side. There's much more interesting stuff on here as well. Um, we've got another chip there. I'll have a look and see if I can see what the number on that is, I'll put it on the screen here, I can't read it here at the moment. Um, some transistors, these will be the transistors that are used to switch the brushed motors, they'll just be a simple chopper, a pulse width modulator to allow the brushed motors to spin. Um, there is our off on switch and the little motors themselves, tiny little motors just wired directly to the circuit board with these little wires. It's, and the m battery here is 100 milliampere hour battery, so gives you an idea of uh, if you need to replace the battery, I guess you can just wire one in. That's really nice. It's a really nice little piece of kit. I'm so impressed. And again, I don't really know how they can make them for this cost. I mean, okay, the, the bill of materials, the component costs are relatively low, but you know, you've still got to have these things assembled. Well, first of all, you've got to recover your design costs and you've got to 
pay for the bits and pieces. You've got to have the boards assembled. You've got to have the plastic molds made. You've got to have it all packaged up. You've got to have it shipped. Um, man, it's just incredible value for money how they can do this. And also how small they can do it. I mean, here's my finger. Look, there's my finger. Look at the size of all this stuff. It's so small. Brilliant. So the Cheerson CX-5, it's not only is it cheap and fun, but it's actually a really nice little bit of kit. Brilliant. I think I, again, I recommend these. They are well worth having.